Hello and welcome back to our Animation Blueprint series where we're covering everything you need to know about Animation Blueprints in Unreal Engine 5. So in the first part we looked at what an Animation Blueprint is and how we set one up including a first look at a state machine. Now I do promise we'll be going back to state machines in a lot more detail down the line but before we do that I do want to go through what our blend space is for our movement. So in this part we're going to go through blend spaces, how to set them up and what they actually do and best practices with them. So let's get started. So last time we were in Animation Blueprint, we created this movement state inside of our state machine. And we just put in the jog forward animation. However, if I want my character to be able to move in different directions and stray from backwards and, and blend nicely between these, then I'm going to use something called a blend space. A blend space allows you to blend multiple animations together based upon certain values. And there's two types of blend space. There's a two-dimensional one and a one-dimensional one. In Unreal 5.2, which is what this is in, you create a blend space by going to right click, animation, and you'll find blend space. If you're in a one directional blend space, you go down to legacy and you'll find blend space 1D. We'll be doing a normal blend space, two dimensional one, like here. And I'll choose a skeleton. And we'll quiz one movement, blend space. And open it up. So blend space is a new window for us to look at and in here we've got a few things I'm going to talk you through. So on the left hand side we've got the skeleton tree which shows us our skeleton. Also has the asset details tab which gives us lots of details about the blend space uh, asset itself. On the right hand side we've got a details panel again changes based on what you click on. And you also got a preview scene so you can try things out and see what it looks like. And at the bottom is the most important bit which is the graph itself, the blend space graph. And as you can see, we've got two axes. We've got a vertical one and a horizontal one. And it's the combination of these values which will determine how it blends between two different animations or multiple different animations rather. Now, when you do create a blend space, it's always good practice to go straight to your axis settings and set up your axes. So my horizontal axis here is going to be the direction of the character. Okay. So the minimum axis value we're going to do is minus 180, which is backwards, and 180, which is also backwards. So we can do the whole 360, which we're doing. And I'd recommend, in, if you're using Unreal 5, it's not turned on by default, I'd recommend turning on Snap to Grid. This makes it a lot easier to place things around in your grid without having to hold down keys and stuff. So direction, minus 180 to 180. The vertical axis is going to be speed. Now, what we're doing here isn't prescriptive you don't have to do it this way this i found is the most common way and most straightforward way of understanding this um putting direction on horizontal and speed on speed on vertical but you can do it other ways if you so wish um so for speed our minimum value will be zero i.e we're not moving and the maximum axis value would be how fast the character will go maximum that includes sprinting so at the moment our character doesn't have a sprint action in the game i don't think but we've got jog and do we have a sprint? I think they call it uh, travel mode, don't they? Call it in here. Travel, no. They definitely have a move, movement mode for it. Uh, let me find it. So they have jog, 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 jog. Well, maybe this one, this is the one character that doesn't have it. Um, they can have like a, a run as well. Um, I know some of them. Do. They're not. All. You should have it like non combat job. Non -combat. You're not seeing it. Okay, interesting. Um, but you put in whatever the, the fastest speed they're going to be going at. The as the sorry, as the speed value here. So I think mine was going six hundred as maximum speed. So I'll double check that actually. So. Character and character movement, a speed is 600. Okay, so that's our max walk speed. If you've got a sprint, use the sprint speed. So, however fast they're going to move maximum. So, set the grid turn on that. And now we can place in our animations. So, the way this works is you want to place the animations where the values should be correct for that animation. So, for example, if I go to jog, and I do jog forwards first, 
it makes sense to put jog here at 600 in the middle of the direction. So jog zero direction, i.e. forwards, and 600 here would be the maximum speed. So I'm going to pop that there. Obviously, if you've got sprint, it wouldn't be there. It'd be up a bit, high, uh, bit lower. But in my case, it's just there. Okay. Now, that's just forwards. Now, let's do left and right. So, we've got jog, left. And I'm going to put that on the left-hand one, which is this one here. And now, this is how this works. So, you've got two animations. You've got this little cross here to preview this. Now, if you hold down control, you can move this cross around. And you can preview how it blends between the two different animations. There's it running forwards, and it blends into running to the left. And so you get nice, smooth blending of character. I'm going to do that for the right one as well. And I'm going to put in backwards as well. Now, backwards will go both on the left, far left, and both on the far right. Um, because they're both, minus 180 and 180 are the same. Yeah, it's just running backwards, running right, left, forwards, right, backwards. Okay, pretty neat. Um, now, to help with acceleration, I would also recommend putting an idle in here too. So we're going to do idle and put that at the bottom. I usually put it in bot bottom corners as well, just so it's there. But as you can see, if I move the stick a little bit up a little bit, the speed will pick up a little bit and blend nicely into it. And if you've got like a walking speed, you can put walk in there too and put that in at the walking speed, whatever value it should be at. Now with these points, you can move them around freely. You can also right click on them and change which animation they're using. You can also change their, um, their rate scale, how fast they move, or how slow they, they animate. And also you can fine tune the values you're giving it in direction of speed or whatever you've chosen for the horizontal or vertical axes. Now this is a blend space using for movement. It's the most common use for blend spaces, but it definitely isn't the only use for it. I've used it before for like dodging and rolling and also even taking damage and using a damage scaler on a blend space to determine how much they should react to that damage. So it can be really versatile and interesting thing to use for various uh, use, uh, use cases, but Definitely movement is the main you'll find for it. Okay. Uh, so that's all there is for the blend space setup. We're going to save that, go back to our animation blueprint, and I'm going to replace my jog forward here with my blend space. I'm going to do movement, ES, blend space, and plug that in. Now you can see here we've got direction of speed, our horizontal and vertical axes are now output as a uh, parameter that we can feed into it. So what we're going to do, Speed, we really know how to do. We can get the current velocity and get vector length. That in there. Direction, though, is a different matter. If we want to get direction from velocity, we need the pawn it's attached to. Now, there is a slight problem with that if you do it, don't, if you do it all in the animation blueprint. So, for example, I'll just show you. If I go in here and do calculate direction, I need the base rotation. And I can only get the base rotation from the pawn. Well, I could do try get pawn owner, but this won't be that safe to get because again, it could not exist yet. So if I were to do actor rotation and plug that in and hit compile, it oh oh no, I plugged it in. There you go. There you go. It comes through as an unsafe, uh, potentially unsafe thread because this may not yet exist. So. What's the best thing to do is to take this bit, take that out of there, go to our event graph, and over here, we've really got the validation check here covering our backsides with this. So I'll get the try, I'll get pawn owner, I'll get the rotation, axle rotation, and from the velocity, we're going to do calculate direction, and the base rotation will be our actor. And there we have our float, which is going to promote that to a variable, and that'll be direction. This outputs a value between minus 180 and 80. Now I'll go back to my movement blend space and I'll just drag in that variable instead. Okay. Okay. So that's our blend space input. Now, at the moment, it's going to be hard to test this because my character turns when I 
move different directions. It doesn't, he's not fixed to face whichever way the camera's going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my character's blueprint, go to character movement, and scroll down to find the rotation settings. And on here by default, you'll see orient rotation to movement. I'm going to turn that off and turn on use controller desired rotation instead. And what that will do instead is it will now strafe my move. And you can see that blend space in action, blending nicely between our forward, our left, our backwards, and our right. Yeah. Very good there. Excellent. And that's blend spaces. So if you have any questions about blend spaces, do leave a comment below. Um, and I can dive into it a lot more detail if you need it to. Uh, but for the most part, that is all you really need to know about blend spaces. Um, but yeah, catch you the next time where we add jumping to our character. There you go. We've now covered blend space. And as I mentioned, they're used for many things, not just movement, but it's most commonly used for movement. And no doubt down the line in this series, we'll cover some of those other uses too and what you could do with them. In the next part, we're going to go ahead and add jumping to our character and show a bit more about the state machine, how we can manipulate and maneuver around it to create these jumping loops. And this is done through state aliases. So we're going to learn about state aliases in the next episode, which you can find right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley from just $1 a month. You get access to all our videos early as well as access to create a challenge, a monthly series where you can submit a, uh, a prototype or a game project based upon a uh, theme that I give you and you get feedback based upon the work you've submitted. So it's a very small, tiny challenge to try and do, but it's a great way of getting feedback, uh, professional feedback about the work that you're doing. Thank you so much to all the patrons for their continued support in the channel. And thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.